Hello there, my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video. Uh, today's a little bit of a supplementary. I just did a review of the Conklin Durograph, back in black, and the nib was a bit of a disappointment, both the Omniflex and the medium nib. And I tried to work with that nib for a bit, but then I thought, well, I'm going to do a nibectomy on this. And you'll be totally conscious throughout the entire operation. And the first thing I thought of was, well, I'll take the Omniflex out and replace it with one of my number six nibs. I have Moonman, I have a couple of Shi Shui Yao uh, nibs in number six. Uh, but I was concerned that the, the pen might look odd. Uh, with all this rose gold, if I put a non-black nib on there, I put a stainless steel on there, it's going to look odd with that silver against that rose gold. But then I remembered that about a year ago, I bought this pen. This is the Natami uh, time, Flight of Time. Uh, it, I believe it's the Inception. Uh, I'll have to remember what it's called, but there's a, a beautiful rose gold number six nib on this. It's a fine. And you can see it's got some uh, Yamabudo ink in it right now. This pen belongs to my wife now because she fell in love with it. And it is such a gorgeous pen. Uh, but when it first came, this nib and section were bent in transport. I got it from Bobby Pens on eBay, and he immediately sent me, uh, instead of a whole new pen, sent me just the section and the nib. So I had this extra nib sitting around, and I thought, well, wait a minute. Let's take a look at this pen and see whether this number six nib would fit on this Conklin. So I decided to do a little bit of surgery today. And it was very successful, but I went back through my steps and put it all back again so I could videotape this and uh, show you how it's done on camera. That's why my fingers are all inky right now because I've been doing surgery. So as I said, the first thing I thought of was, well, let's take the extra nib because I don't think I'm ever going to use this flex nib again. It's just no way to control the, the amount of ink that comes out of it. Uh, and I love this pen, but the nibs were disappointing. So we interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Okay, so while I was putting this video together, I got a comment on the Durograph video from a viewer uh, mentioning that I might have flooded the feed when I primed it by pushing the con converter, uh, and that's why the pen was not behaving properly with that Omniflex nib. So uh, I did what he suggested, which was to dry the pen out, to fill it normally, um, and uh, wipe it off with a tissue, uh, as you would normally, and uh, then write with it. Or to fill the uh, converter with a syringe and then just let gravity, uh, let the ink uh, flood that feed naturally. So I've done the former. I emptied the pen out and I filled it up uh, normally uh, with uh, dipping the, the nib in and drawing up the converter and then wiping it off with a tissue. And I've written with it with, for a bit and I'm finding some of the same issues. So I decided to give this a try first just to give the comparison uh, for my own sake here. Um, this is my Jinhao 159 with uh, the Zebra G nib. And um, I filled it up with some Takisume. And I'm just going to write with this. And then I'm going to write with the Durograph. And, it, and look at the difference in the experience.
So again, I mentioned that I'm no calligrapher. I'm no expert at any of this. I've only done this a few times, but I've tried to give it as much of a low angle as possible, trying to be light on the upstroke and heavier on the downstroke. So we'll see the difference here. So I think you can see that the Omniflex nib is very, very, very wet. It's still wet on there. It's going to be wet for a number of minutes here. So I don't know. I just, uh, I, I would give up even attempting to do flex writing if I started with this and thought it was just me and not the nib. Um, I'm glad I've got the the Zebra G here to show me that, you know, it's not so bad. I like playing with this. So I gave it a try anyway. There you go. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. Let's see whether we can get that nib out of there. And I, so I put my rubber material on that and gave it a tug. And it comes out. And... You can take that nib off, and then we're left with the section. And then I took my Natami, my extra Natami nib, and I put it on, lined it up with the feed, and there's a, a little bit of a, let's see if we can zoom in on this a little bit. There's a little bit of a semicircle collar that you can see in there, right? Maybe in the lights this way. Just that top curve. That's where the curve of the nib goes, and it's a little flatted on the bottom. And of course, the bottom of the feed has got a flat to it. And so you just slip it in there, keys in. And I pushed it down so that the feed was all the way in. And then I gave the nib a push, but as you can see, that's what happened. So that was disappointing. Um, and it's too loose to even put in the right position and then try to press on the nib if you're going to write it just pushes it right back in so I took that out again and put the little black squid nib back in there so it's ready to go for whenever if ever it ever gets used again and then I thought, okay, well, I'm going to have to take this medium nib out because the feeds are obviously different. So here's the medium nib. And in discussion with some of my viewers, I'm not sure whether this is a Yovo or whether it is, in fact, a Bach. Uh, since the uh, inventories at Goulet Pen seem to have running through the Bach nibs, and then replacing them with Novo. So I don't know whether this is an old stock Bach. There's no way to know because it's black enamel. Uh, apparently the Yovos have a different kind of coloring in there if they're silver and gold. Anyway, I have to replace this nib anyway. I tried working on it and it's just too disappointing. So rubber material, just if you push your knuckles together as well, it helps pull that out. We take the, that nib away, and this feed fits that number six Natami a lot better. So what I do is I line it up at the so that the corners of the feed sort of are close to the shoulders of the curve of the nib. And I hold it together like this, find 
find my nib collar. Oh, it's under something. <laughs> it's hard to work around the camera. You can't see where you, what you're doing. And again, it has the same kind of a keying system as the other one did. And it fits right in there. And it fits tight. I pushed it in deep, and that's as deep as it'll go. I'm going to take my little jeweler's cloth here and polish that nib while it's ink free. And then line it up because when you push it in, sometimes it becomes misaligned. Polish it a little bit. And then we screw it back into the section. It comes out really easy, unscrews really easy, and the swap was dead simple. Now, I've already inked this up once before, Instead of using the Takasume that I used before, I'm ink this up with Diamine Bilberry, which is a deep purple ink. There we go. Looking pretty good. And then everybody calls me Daredevil Doug because I do this. turning the nib upside down, running the piston down, and priming the feed just like this. Watch the ink flow. I've got a cloth on my table. And there goes the ink. And I back it off a bit. You see? It's flooding that feed. And that way I don't have to dip that nib in the ink. That all worked out pretty well. If I can only find the barrel of my pen, there it is. Now, what do you think of that? That's not a bad match. The rose gold is slightly off. In fact, here, this looks more gold than rose because the rose gold must be a different color. And look at that. A little bit of Yamabuto over time, and it's uh, made that rose gold nib even rosier. That is rose. And it's not a bad match. I think it looks nice. Does it right nice. That's what we're going to do next. Okay, so here we go with the Conklin Durograph with a nibectomy. It's Bach or Yovo, I'm not sure which, black nib has been replaced with a Natami. And let's look at that nib. I didn't look at it closely before. But as you can see, it says Natami. There's an F. And it says the flight of time. And then there's all these scrolls on it, which I think it's a very attractive nib. It is a fine, and I'm very pleased to be able to repurpose this nib, because there was nothing wrong with it. So, I'm going to focus down here. There we go. Conklin. Durograph. And the ink is diamine, bilberry. I've done nothing to this nib. As you can see, it's very wet.
I'm very pleased. This nib has a bit of bounce to it, where the other one uh, was pretty stiff. So, we're getting a fine line here. And I push it a little bit. Maybe if I zoom in here, you can see how that nib flexes off of that feed. I don't know whether it's because it doesn't fit right. It doesn't give you a lot of line variation, but I do like the bounce. This is a steel nib. Reverse, not so much. That's me missing the page right there. This is a bit of a success story here because I was uh, a little bit disappointed that this pen, for the amount that I paid for it, uh, the nib was disappointing. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm probably not going to write with this pen now. And I thought, well, maybe I'll put a silver nib in it. But uh, fine, repurposing that Natami has uh, really made this pen come alive for me. And everything else about this pen, I just adore. That satiny feeling, um, the look of the pen, the way the duofold style fits in my hand. It's very, very light. Everything about this pen is terrific now. So, four stars for this. It takes a little bit of work, but uh, it does show you that the Durograph, even if the nib is disappointing, you can buy another nib for them. You can get a Yovo nib. Um, some people have put uh, Nemocene nibs on these as well. Uh, but here is just a very inexpensive Chinese nib um, that went on this pen that was just sitting in my drawer. And now this has become a stellar pen. So I thought you'd be interested in an update for those of you that were following this pen. And again, that just leaves it for me to say thank you for your additional watching. And that's all she wrote.